Good evening. I am Nina Robinelli Heller, the Dean of the Yukon School of Social Work, and I am delighted to welcome you all tonight to our opening event for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, we are coming, the School of Social Work is coming upon our 75th um, anniversary. And so over the last few weeks, I have been reading reams of historical documents and our oral history of the first 50 years. And I cannot tell you how many times um, the contributions of our Latina faculty, students and community in Hartford was mentioned as being vital to the School of Social Work. So I think it's very fitting tonight um, that we are able to welcome our faculty, our staff, our performers, our alumni and our community members um, to this wonderful celebration. So I thank you all for being here tonight um, and hope you will be able to join us in future events. It is now my great honor to introduce our moderators for the evening. Uh, our first one is Dr. Lisa Workmeister Rosas, uh, who is associate professor here at the School of Social Work um, and formerly the uh, program director for our new, new BSW program. Welcome and thank you, Lisa. And it's also my great pleasure to introduce uh, Jamisha, um, who is uh, a BSW, Rodriguez, who is a BSW student. Um, I met uh, Jamisha a couple of weeks ago uh, in our student center and uh, on our ground floor and was totally delighted to meet her for her enthusiasm um, and her um, uh, absolute immersion in our new BSW program. So you're gonna hear great things from her tonight as well as from Lisa. Um, and please enjoy our program and our show. Thank you. Gracias, Dean Heller. Bienvenidos y buenas tardes. Gracias por venir uh, to our kickoff event of the Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, before we begin, I did want to just uh, say a, a quick word about language. Uh, the use of the words uh, Latino, Latina, Latine, Latinex has been and continues to be bit of a controversial, you know, afternoon kind of talk amongst uh, Latinos. And so I wanted to situate uh, ourselves and kind of explain where we come up with the use of our language. For us, uh, uh, we know that Latinos come from a variety of countries and races and ethnicities and cultures, and we're used to being inclusive of difference. And that's one of the reasons why we do use the word Latine, Latinex, um, and we continue to strive to be inclusive and particularly in this case of our gender non-conforming and transgender gente. Um, people are welcome to use what, what they feel most comfortable with, but I wanted to kind of give you a sense of how, how we kind of understand that particular um, word. So um, now, before I kind of talk about the event a little bit, I just wanted to remind folks that on October 7th, we'll be having our second event um, from uh, 6 to 7.30 with Dr. Medina and Dr. Rivera Diaz. And they will be talking about um, Puerto Rico and the resilience um, of the Puerto Rican people in our current uh, economic and um, sociopolitical times. So I hope that you can join us. You can go on our website and, and register for that. So just a note about our event. This year's theme of Hispanic Heritage Month is Esperanza, a celebration of Hispanic heritage and hope. I can't think of a better way to celebrate the persistent relevance of hope that is so pervasive in our Latine communities all around the world than with music. The, the mixing of and melding of uh, the myriad Latine traditions and cultures are found in our program tonight. And you, you might recognize a few of the songs. Um, and they're gonna be explained to you in terms of where these particular uh, mixing and meldings come from. And I'm not sure if anyone else feels the way I do, but for me, um, music, even if it's sad, angry, tragic, happy, brings me a feeling of hope. 
uh, and I think it, because it's for me a sharing of space and being with those who came before me, those who are with me presently, and, and those who will come after me. Um, and with this, we celebrate our ancestors, our roots, our ongoing endurance por la lucha. Uh, and we are so incredibly fortunate to have our educator, musicians, and uh, entertainers here tonight who will help us explore Latinidad in, in music. So with that, Jamisha, I will have you. Um, oh, and one more thing, sorry. If you have questions for our uh, musicians and educators, if you could post them in the Q&A as we go along. And uh, in the end, we'll, we'll uh, answer those questions. So thank you so much, Jamisha. Thank you, Lisa. Good evening, everyone. So originally, we have Gonzalo Cortez, originally from Chile. He was previously, he was previously principal flute of the Classical Orchestra of Santiago, Chile. He studied at the Catholic University of Chile and Duquesne University. In Duquesne, in New York, he studied with Robert Langiving, principal flute of the New York, the New York Phil harmonic. As a soloist and orchestral musician, he has toured South America and the United States with different ensembles. He has, sorry, he has performed at numerous music festivals in Canada, the United States, Venezuela, Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil. In addition to Mr. Cortez's pursuit of classical training, he is an advocate for world music, particularly flutes from around the world. He has recorded with the internationality, uh, sorry, acclaimed Chilean folk group in Inti Ilimani and with the Choral Art Society of Washington, D.C. for the Naxos label. He is the founder and artistic director of the Hartford Flute Assemble, Atacama Assemble, and a member of the Calmia Assemble, Blue Made Madeiras, and the Cortez Chavez Duo. We also have Carlos Chavez Hernandez, I mean, pardon, Carlos Hernandez Chavez as a true Autodidact, Carlos learned to play the guitar and the electric bass, which led to the formation of his first rock group in 1960 with self-made electric guitars. They played wherever they wanted, often for free for the, for the pleasure of performing. Carlos has been a pioneer in promoting the music of Mexico and Latin America in Connecticut. He founded and led his own assembles, Sol de America and Tierra Mestiza. He also has worked with talented international artists, teaching himself to play the Mexican guitar. Under the leadership of a Yukon musicologist, he confirms Mariachi Rio Grande, believed to be the first authentic mariachi band in Connecticut. Carlo has been the Val Ramos Flamenco Assembles bassist since 1994, performing with seasoned musicians across the state. He currently serves on the Bushnell's Board of Ambassadors, the Edward C. and Ann T. Roberts Foundation, and the Mariachi Academy of New England Advisory Board. And without further ado, here we have our guest. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, we're going to start a program with a song from Spain. Uh, the reason for that is that the music of Spain has uh, permeated uh, all the music that we listen to in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, this song is, uh, is called uh, España Cañí. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we're going to be jumping around Latin America. It's not a trip that follows a line, but just sampling of what uh, um, the influences of Spain and the indigenous uh, people have come together to form the music that we have been listening for a long time. These uh, songs that we perform <clears throat> are generally the, the traditional classics from each country in, in general. Um, the next one is from Venezuela. It's called Alma Llanera. Uh, and it was uh, written by Pedro Elias Gutierrez. And this is a, this is a joropo, it's a different style of, uh, of rhythm called Joropo and it's played in a small instrument and harp. Uh, we have made arrangements for flute and guitar in all of the performance that you will hear tonight. <laughs> TV studios, nice and warm. <laughs> this next song uh, comes from uh, Mexico, which is the place that I was born and raised. And this is a composition by Gerardo Tamez, a member of the group Los Folkloristas back in the 1980s. This group uh, tried to uh, recover uh, and re-promote the uh, tradition of music of all the parts of uh, around Mexico and, and Latin America in general, a uh, very popular group. And uh, the guitarist, Gerardo Tamez, uh, composed this song, uh, getting some of the elements of the Mexican folklore, folkloric music in the style of the Huapango. It's called Tierra Mestiza. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we go to uh, South America. Why don't you say something about Pajaro Chihui? Oh, Pajaro Chihui and Galopera, these are songs, folk songs from the Paraguay, small country in South America. And in general, those songs are played by harp. As a small harp, they're tuned in the key of G or D major. And on a singer, do they use a small guitar as well? So we made a version of two songs here, the Pajaro Chowi and the Galopera. Notice the Galopera, the singer, um, when they sing this song, uh, they hold the note for a very, very long time. I'm gonna try to, to create that, that long song and see if I, if I survive that. Oh, sure you will. <laughs> okay. And the Pajaro Chowi is the harp is trying to imitate the song uh, of, a, of a songbird. That's what it's called, Pajaro Chowi. Next song is a song composed by the Puerto Rican Rafael Hernandez. Um, as I understand it, he composed it while he was in New York and it was quite a shock for him. And I'm sure for all the people who come from the Caribbean or from tropical countries to move to a, to a place that is very harsh in the winter. <laughs> And this song is called uh, Campanitas de Cristal. Uh, and he refers to the Campanitas de Cristal or crystal bells as the icicles hanging from the window uh, in the winter and uh, kind of uh, missing his land. Um, and it's a wonderful little song. Um, I understand also that uh, um, Rafael Hernandez lived in Mexico for, for quite a while in the state of Puebla. And uh, it is in Puebla where he wrote a lot of his most popular songs. 
So a lot of people kind of uh, claim that as a Mexican song, but they are not Mexican. They are strictly Puerto Rican, written somewhere else. So here is uh, Campanitas de Cristal for all our friends and brothers and sisters of Puerto Rico. <laughs> Moliendo Café is a song, it's a very popular song by Hugo Blanco uh, from Colombia. Um, it is usually a song that everybody dances to. It's a cumbia. Uh, and it's a very happy, uh, happy song. It talks about uh, uh, grinding coffee. It's really about the coffee industry. Uh, it's a very happy industry. Um, very popular around the world. 
So here we go with Moliendo Café. <laughs> So, yes, uh, the flute that you just heard, well, this is the flute of the Andes, or also known as the flute of the Incas. So this is the Kena. It's a very simple instrument. It's a wonderful instrument at the same time. It has six finger holes on the top, one in the back, and an end and notch here. That you, in order to make a sound, you just need to blow air through the end nut and you get this sound. Um, you can compare versus the classical flute and the kina. They have almost the same register. The flute, the traditional flute has uh, three octaves. This one has almost three octaves. So it's, it's, it's amazing why you can really play with this, in, this instrument. One of the main characteristics is that you can bend the notes with glissandos, for example. So in that way, you can create more expression to the, the musical line. Different sizes, I have the bigger brother. Well, this one is the Kenacho. Okay, you can. don't drop it off. Bigger, so the, the, the pitch, the sound is deeper, low. In the bigger hands too. So this is the equivalent to the flute or violin uh, on the register, and this one would be something like a, the viola, just comparing the two. The next song that we're going to play is from the Andes, specifically specific from the Peru. There's a famous song called El Condor Pasa. And then you're gonna be able to hear all these uh, bending notes on the kena. So this is our next song. Mm -hmm. 
stay in Peru. I'm sure some of you will enjoy that particularly. Um, this is a wino by Gilberto Rojas Enriquez. And if you like to dance, winos are wonderful to dance to. I used to hang out at the Club Peru in, in uh, Hartford many years ago. And that's where I learned to, to, dance, to dance wino. It's a wonderful rhythm. And this is called Ojos Azules. Oh, yes. What means blue eyes. Blue eyes. And then I will be uh, playing in these pen pipes. So like the flute of the Andes, these are the pen flutes of, the, the, of South America, the Andean region that goes from basically from the Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, north of Chile and Argentina. That's the called the Andean region. So when we say it's from Peru, it means really it belongs to all the, the whole region. This is a pen flute. The name is Zampoña in Spanish, or in Aymara, Sicus. It's made of two tight rows of cane. So I, I like to separate them. <laughs> um, and they are open on the top and then closed on the bottom. And then you make a sound that is Okay, and there are different sizes too. I brought some of my stuff here. They have different names. The smallest one will be the equivalent to a piccolo or, yeah, piccolo or piccolo, what is that? Yeah, piccolo. Uh, yeah. So very small. The name of this one is Ica. The one that I call in my other hand is the standard one. And the name for this one is a Sicus. Malta. And then we have different ones. The next side would be Sanka, but I don't have here, it's a little bit bigger. But this one is very interesting one. This one is um, Rondador. This one is specifically from Ecuador. And then it has one long tube, short tubes, long tube, short tubes, and they create like a an harmonica sound. 
Hadi. This is the rondel from Ecuador. A different pain flute that I'm gonna be playing as well in the next song is this one. This one is bigger than, much bigger than the Malta, the, the standard size, you can see the difference. Uh, the name of this is Sevitoyo. Has low notes like a violoncello. <laughs> Yes, and there are, yeah, you're right, there's a bigger one there, the, there's uh, as tall as me, I have to stand in a chair in order to play it, yes. or oh, you got to be taller, I guess, I don't know, just kidding, but that the name of that big one it will be like the double bass, um, mm -hmm. I have it at, at home, I couldn't break it, it doesn't fit in my car, yeah, <laughs> that's the same. Okay. okay, so the next next song is Ojos Azules. that is uh, traditionally sung during the uh, Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead festivity uh, in November. And um, it's a very plaintive song of a woman who comes out at night looking for her children who, who drowned. Um, and it's made out of different kinds of, of, of uh, verses that perhaps have nothing to do with the song, but 
that's what art is about. You know, you take your liberties and write whatever you want. So, but this is a this is a very very uh, uh, wonderful wonderful song. It's called La Llorona. It was written by uh, Andres Enestrosa. Usually, people don't give credit to to the to the composers. They just sing the song and they don't name the composer. So this was Andres Enestrosa. Mm -hmm. En el negro llorona, llorona, que es un celeste. Todos me dicen el negro llorona, negro, pero cariñoso. Yo soy como el chile verde llorona, picante pero sabroso. Yo soy como el chile verde llorona. Picante pero sabroso, ay de mi llorona, llorona de azul celeste, ay de mi llorona, llorona de azul celeste, y aunque la vida me cueste llorona, no dejaré de quererte y aunque la vida me cueste llorona no dejaré de quererte Porque no me ven llorar. Dicen que no tengo duelo, llorona, porque no me ven llorar. Hay muertos que no hacen ruido, llorona, y es más grande su penar. Hay muertos que no hacen ruido, llorona, y es más grande su penar. Ay de mi llorona, llorona llévame al río. Ay de mi llorona, llorona, llorona llévame al río. Tápame con tu rebozo, llorona, porque me muero de frío. Tápame con tu rebozo, llorona. Porque me muero de frío. Gracias. Y para terminar. Nos vamos a Brasil. We're going to Bra Brazil. That's how they say it, Brazil. It's also a very uh, traditional song. It's of samba. Um, if any of you have a, ha, has experienced samba in, in the full, um, uh, with the full sound, you will never, ever forget it. Um, this is Tico Tico No Fubá. Uh, and this has been one of my favorites since I was a kid. Um, and it was written by Zequinha de Abreu. Thank you. 
Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for having us. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jamisha. Yes, if anyone has any questions, we can take one or two questions. Muchas preguntas. I think you have all, um, you both have really kind of explained the music well. Um, I think, I think there is one question. Let's see. Um, oh, well, someone is a fan and wants to know where else you perform. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever they hire us, <laughs> there, uh, there, is, there is no a, a permanent place for musicians that I know of other than if you're a jazz player, of course, you know, uh, jazz is everywhere and I do play jazz, but we do play jazz, but it's not really what we really have our heart in. So, um, but yeah, we do have, we do have uh, a number of requests to, to perform here and there. So we posted them on Facebook, you can follow us on Facebook, and then we, this is a good way to know where it's our <laughs> next show on events. <laughs> Great. We also have another question. Are there any flutes that Gonzalo can't play? She is there. Yeah, every, every country in the world has a different kind of flutes. Uh, yeah, every culture, yes. I tried to learn Japanese flute, Chinese flutes, and Turkey, the, you kind of need different lives to, in order to. I specialize just on the um, South American flute. Wonderful, great. Well, you're both incredibly talented and knowledgeable, and we are very lucky to have had you um, here with us tonight. Is there anything you want to? kind of add to kind of what you were talking about with the different, uh, I guess, uh, inspirations from, you know, all these different areas and the music and the instruments. Any, I know it's a lot, but is there anything else you want to kind of give people food for thought? Well, um, it's like in, in every country, there are so many variations of, of music and so many styles and so many meanings. Uh, for example, in Mexico, it, I could not begin to, to cover uh, a, a tenth of, of what music has been played in Mexico. Within a region, there are a number of, of styles that are played um, in, 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 in Mexico. For example, we have the Huasteca music. Huasteca is the, the, where the three states merge or meet. And those three states, I'm speaking of Tamaulipas and Veracruz and Hidalgo and uh, San Luis Potosí, that the, when they're three, the, the, when the three uh, um, states merge, that area is called the Huasteca and they all have the same, the same tempos. Um, usually it's a six, eight, but uh, in a very different uh, rendition, for example, in Veracruz, the harp and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, Jarana, and then you have Jarana Veracruzana, and then you have the Jarana Potosina, and then Jarana Hidalguense, and then they play with fiddle in one area, whether in, in the other areas. It's hard, but it's the, 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 uh, the style of music that is playing there. Then you go to the south, all the way to Chiapas and to Oaxaca, and then you have all variations of, of marimba. You know, marimba is very, very, uh, uh, deeply rooted in the music of Oaxaca and, and Chiapas. And then you go all the way to the north, you know, and then you have the very heavy German influence with the accordion. 
and the, the, uh, the bass, the, the, the upright bass, and, uh, and some other instruments, you know, the bajo sesto and what have you. So there's, and, and they're all Mexican music, of course, you know, but when people think of Mexican music, they only refer to, to mariachi music because mariachi has been responsible for making Mexican music popular around the world. But there are many other, other styles of music just as, as strong and, and, and deeply rooted in the, in the cultures of where they, play, they are played. Um, so, uh, and I invite people to just Google um, I mean, we have we have that resource that a lot of people really don't 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 appreciate and don't utilize. I mean, you can learn so much from other countries and other cultures. Just you go Google music of Mexico, and you will see the variety vocal music, uh, just vocals, and um, in, the, in the sierras of, of of Durango and all those places. Um, and then you have the lacandones and Chiapas, you know, with the with the handmade violins or fiddles. And, and flutes, and it's just an amazing array of sounds and styles that you will just fall in love with. You know, we have a tendency here, and, and I blame the media for it. We have a tendency just to go to Europe, to go somewhere else. We don't go south at all. You know, like we don't exist. You know, you see it in the news. You really do see it in the news. Everything happens in Europe. Everything happens in Japan, in Asia, in Russia, everywhere. Mexico, what's Mexico? Oh, you know, all they talk about are Mexicans, you know, the migrants, you know, they're invading us and that kind of stuff. And, you know, in the Caribbean, they ignore completely Central America. Central America is such a rich country and culture and, and so on. So you can go all the way down to the, to the, to the, to the uh, El Cono Sur or the south end of, of, the, of the continent and you will find so many rich uh, renditions of, of culture. And, uh, and if people really want to learn, you know, all they have to do is just do a couple of clicks and they're there. So, you know, I said enough that I think. Uh, That's uh, a great recommendation. YouTube is great. And um, I, I, you know, so I completely agree, like check it out, keep looking at uh, and listening to the different kinds of music. I know we're running up on time and I um, just, Again, really want to thank uh, Don Gonzalo and uh, Don Carlos. Uh, you know, I think music hits people where they need to feel it, you know. Uh, and for me, uh, especially listening to the Sampania uh, and the Sampunia and the Kena and Guitarra, like I feel like um, I remember being at home and watching my parents dance the Huayno and with good food, good company, good music. And um, I appreciate having been able to feel that. And um, thank you for sharing your rich heritage, your wonderful talent, your amazing knowledge yep. and your esperanza. So yes, uh, you have, your Facebook name is? Carlos Hernandez Chavez. <laughs> and Gonzalo Cortez. Ah, Cortez. I didn't mean to leave Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. Uh, they are also such rich cultures. I have lived in Puerto Rico a number of times and went to Trinidad and Tobago. And I'll tell you that you come transformed, you know, in Trinidad, for example, the Calypso and the pan music uh, is just absolutely incredible. And in Puerto Rico, you have all kinds of styles as well. Well, you go to the mountain is one style, you go to the coast and you have the very heavily African influences. So it's, it's so rich in each country, regardless of its size. I'm sure in the Haiti and the Dominican Republic can find the exact same variations, you know, different, different uh, flavors. And I could, I could not, uh, I'm hurting for, uh, for IT right now, uh, as, as everybody should, but uh, IT also has a rich, rich tradition of music as well, African and French influences and Creole and all those things, which are absolutely wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for reminding us that there are so many places we can look for the beautiful sound and be beautiful music of so many different people. So thank you so much. And um, thank you for kicking out our Hispanic Heritage Month off. Thank you wonderful. for inviting us. And Muchísimas gracias. Yes, muchas gracias. So we do have one last question. Mm -hmm. It's, is the tradition of folkloric music still popular with the younger generation in Latin America? 
I I would say yes, it's strong, and then it's a mix of the urban music, musica urbana, and where they use these traditional instruments as well. Yes, I, I've seen some videos of uh, indigenous uh, uh, musicians uh, in Mexico who have uh, uh, embraced the modern modern forms of music and they have incorporated them into into their traditions. Uh, it's it's really a wonderful mix, you know. It, it for 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 us purists, uh, it's a little difficult to to embrace fully because, you know, we're we're just uh, so deeply rooted in in, in what we grew up with. Uh, but uh, it, they're wonderful. I mean, and, and they're exploring new ways of expressing themselves uh, because they are new ways and I, I, traditions. Uh, too many people mean that they do remain unchanged. And that is not the case. I think that traditions are created as you live them, you know, and we are living in a modern era and there are gonna be some modern traditions. Uh, for example, hip hop music, is, it's a tradition, like it, like it or not. It's a traditional uh, uh, form of musical expression. So, uh, so it is, it is uh, uh, very present, uh, the, 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 the old traditions, musical traditions continue to be to be embraced. And in Mexico, there is a huge push to, to re rescue the languages, you know, Nahuatl, Otomi, and Chichimeca, and all those, all those uh, languages that, that uh, with, the, with the Spaniards' uh, conquest or, or invasion, I would call it, uh, they suppressed them and they tried to get rid of all of that stuff. And, uh, and they, uh, they didn't get rid of everything. So they are trying to rescue all of that, including the music, including dance, including uh, artistic forms. So it is wonderful. And I think it's happening everywhere else too, especially with countries that have, uh, in countries that have uh, suffered the, the invasion of, 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 of forces alien to them. Yeah, and, and actually a, a great example of that is um, uh, um, La Voz Peru, Daniel Lasso had uh, sung the Ojos Azules and he sang part of it in Quechua. So that I think you're right that the younger generation is embracing our history, our ancestors and wanting to make sure that they continue to have a voice um, as, as we all do and should. We must have, yes. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you all for um, participating, for coming, for listening. Uh, and again, Don Gonzalo and Don Carlos, gracias para tu música. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you all. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you, you too. so much. Thank you.